Hello, today we're going to talk about reactivity 1.3.1 and 1.3.2. This is about combustion reactions, both complete combustion and incomplete combustion. Okay, so for combustion, it's always going to be something reacting with oxygen. Typically, it's a gas. Um, and for a lot of these, they're going to be combination reactions or synthesis reactions. So what that means is it's going to be some element with oxygen forming a new element where the two elements are combined. So let me give you a couple examples. It could be a metal, like um, let's say magnesium can react with oxygen to form magnesium oxide. Um, and then we need to balance. So like if you burn a strip of magnesium, it forms white magnesium oxide as a product. Um, another example would be like if sulfur reacts with oxygen to form sulfur dioxide. So it could be metals or nonmetals that follow this format um, for combustion reactions. Now organic compounds can also undergo combustion reactions. The organic compound will react with oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. And this is for complete combustion. So it's going to be breaking the carbon-carbon bonds to form these CO2 molecules. So let's look at an example. Um, let's say I have C3H8 propane reacting with oxygen. It's going to form carbon dioxide and water. Um, and of course you need to balance. So I've got my three carbon dioxide molecules and I need four water molecules. Um, so 10 total oxygen atoms, so I need a 5 here to get that to balance properly. Um, so there's my balanced combustion of propane. Now you can also do combustion of like alcohols um, or certain other organic compounds, um, but it will, for complete combustion, it will produce carbon dioxide and water as your products. Now in some cases, the compounds will not completely react. So we call that incomplete combustion. And in incomplete combustion, instead of forming carbon dioxide, it will either form carbon monoxide or just carbon. And so this happens in low oxygen environments, a limited amount of oxygen available, or if you have a, a, a compound with a really high carbon concentration. Um, it will also produce water vapor, of course. Oops. Uh, depending on the temperature. And um, it's always some organic compound with oxygen is going to be forming either carbon monoxide or carbon. Now, usually they will give you enough information in the question for you to know what's going on. Um, they'll indicate somehow like saying that there's a limited oxygen so far or that it produces carbon monoxide. Now, this could be problematic. Um, so if you're burning certain fuels in your home, um, some of the side products could be carbon monoxide um, or even carbon. But carbon monoxide is a very poisonous gas. Um, and so you'll see um, a lot of homes will have carbon monoxide detectors um, because uh, it can be very dangerous if carbon monoxide is being produced in the house. Um, so yeah, and it, it could be um, any organic compound um, could be asked about for this uh, for incomplete combustion. Um, let me give you one example of this. So let's say I have like hexane, C6H12. And the question would be then, um, C6H12 undergoes incomplete combustion to produce carbon monoxide. Um, and then you would balance the equation. So the six um, carbon monoxides would need to be formed, six water molecules would need to be formed and that gives me 12 oxygen atoms, so I need six. Now, let me compare that really quick to complete combustion. If I have, if it's complete combustion, it would be CO2 being formed instead. And you would still need six carbon, carbon dioxide molecules because of the six carbons. And you would need six water molecules being formed. But now I have 18 oxygen atoms. So this would be nine oxygen molecules required. So you can see how you need more oxygen for complete combustion. 
um, which is why in limited oxygen environments, you're going to produce carbon monoxide or even just carbon. Sometimes you'll see the carbon um, being formed for incomplete combustion in like, like a really sooty flame. Like if you see blackness around the flame itself, the soot, that is incomplete combustion happening. And so the higher the carbon concentration, the more likely you're gonna see that black sootiness. So let's look at a couple examples for this. Um, complete combustion of pentane. Pentane is C5H12. And complete combustion forms CO2 and H2O. So I'm going to need five carbons and six waters. Um, so this is 10 atoms plus six atoms. So 16 total atoms of oxygen. That means I need eight um, oxygen molecules to balance that out. Now they could also combine these questions with stoichiometry. So what mass of CO2 is produced during complete combustion of butane? Um, so C4H10 for butane and complete combustion forms CO2 and H2O. You would need four carbon dioxide molecules and five water molecules. Um, and then, so that's eight and five, that's 13 oxygen atoms. So I would need 13 halves of an oxygen molecule. Um, if you wanted to, you could multiply everything by two and do um, the two butane, 13 oxygen, eight CO2, and 10 H2O. Um, either way works though, because we're going to use that um, ratio of butane to carbon dioxide, which is still a, a one to four ratio. Um, so I'm going to start with my 1.35 grams of butane. The molar mass of butane is just about 58. I'm gonna round a little bit here. There is uh, one butane for every four CO2 molecules being formed. And then um, we're looking for the mass of CO2 and the molar mass of CO2 is 44 grams per mole. And so when you solve that out, you get uh, 4.10, rounding to three sig figs, grams of CO2. Now it wants to give the balanced equation for the production of carbon monoxide in the incomplete combustion of octane, which is a major component of gasoline. Um, so octane is C8H18, and it reacts with oxygen. Um, production of carbon monoxide. And so when you're balancing this eight um, carbons, we need nine water molecules. And so now I have 17 oxygen atoms, so I could have 17 halves of an oxygen molecule, or if I double it, C8H18 plus 17 oxygen molecules yields 16 carbon monoxides and 18 water molecules. Okay, so this links to um, activation energy. Why is high activation energy considered to be a useful property of a fuel? Well, consider some of the fuels that we talked about here, like propane or gasoline. Um, we don't want those to just react with the oxygen in the air immediately because they would be burning all of the time. There's a ton of oxygen in our air. Um, we want there to be a high activation energy. We need something to start the burning, um, which is usually some kind of spark. Um, so that way it'll start burning when we want it to burn. Um, so that's why it's really useful for them to have a high activation energy. Now for this one, which species are the oxidizing and reducing agents in a combustion reaction? Um, let's look at one so we can look at some oxidation numbers. Um, you don't have to do it this way, but I want to show you. Okay, so um, oxygen will always be zero because it's an element by itself in its standard state. The hydrogen in the compounds here will be plus one. Oxygen in the compounds will be negative two. And then um, the carbon in CO2 is plus four to cancel out the negative fours from the oxygen. And then the carbons will be negative two in this one. So you can see that the carbon goes from negative two to plus four. So the carbon was oxidized, which means it was the reducing agent. 
the oxygen goes from zero to negative two, so it goes down, it was reduced, or it was the oxidizing agent, which makes sense. It's an oxidizing agent. It is oxygen. It's causing other things to be oxidized. Um, so you can always kind of think of it that way, but I wanted to show you with oxidation numbers as well. And then this also um, links to one of your inquiry skills, what might be observed when a fuel such as methane is burned in a limited supply of oxygen. So in terms of observations, um, it's going to do that incomplete combustion. So it's producing carbon monoxide or carbon. But in terms of visual, um, if it's producing carbon, you'll be able to see like a black sootiness being formed, um, which is the, the just elemental carbon uh, being formed. And that's something that we can actually see um, versus the carbon monoxide, which you wouldn't be able to see. Um, now this also links to um, reactivity 2.1, limiting the supply of oxygen in combustion affects the products and increase health risks. So the products, again, instead of CO2 only, it could be carbon monoxide or carbon. And carbon monoxide is a poisonous gas, um, so much so that we need carbon monoxide detectors in our homes. Um, so if you are burning fuels to heat your homes or cook your food, um, you're detecting whether this poisonous gas is being produced at a high enough level for it to be dangerous. Um, Yeah, so we need to make sure that um, if you are burning fuels such as those, you are, have a way to remove the carbon monoxide or um, that it is somehow completely combusting. Um, so yeah, so those, those are the health, health risks that we're talking about.